First of all, hey uh, and welcome back to the channel. It's been some time since I've created new content and well, I couldn't pass this opportunity. As many of you may well know, I'm all for uh, top tier gadgets and uh, flagship smartphones be they brand new or maybe a few generations older. That's what I personally prefer. Given that a member of the family has chosen to change their, to update their phone, I couldn't pass the opportunity to test it, even though it's not something I would prefer. So this got me thinking, is this a viable option? Would I take a closer look and consider this phone uh, to be a daily driver for me, given that this is the A13 and a rather bargain basement uh, uh, alternative. So first thing I expected to see, uh, given that this thing is an LCD and not an AMOLED display, was well, poor legibility, poor, um, you know, poor resolution and really a subpar display. But actually it's not the case. Sure, if you compare it with my S20 AMOLED display, you can see some differences in terms of quality and, uh, uh, well, overall uh, feeling of, uh, you know, the display. That didn't sound good at all, but... <laughs> but anyway, this thing on its own really doesn't feel subpar. It doesn't feel like a compromise or Rather, it doesn't feel like you're making too much of a compromise skipping the AMOLED over the LCD. It doesn't uh, only offer the reassurance of a big professional looking premium device, but also it helps people of a certain age who don't really see all that well from near, uh, they're farsighted, well, they can easily use this phone and actually I'm one of them as well because I do wear reading glasses while I'm working on my day job. Um, other than that, uh, there's not much else going on with this display. I will, however, mention that uh, sunlight legibility is pretty close to acceptable even okay for this price range. So actually Samsung has uh, done their job in terms of display. Um, let's look at the camera a bit and see what we have here because on paper you have a trio of cameras which uh, should offer plenty performance and uh, well handle the tricky situations I would say focusing and creating a depth of field and also close-up pictures. And I shall try to take some relevant pictures of this uh, black on black keyboard just to see if I get enough details and uh, if the results are satisfactory. Let's try to get something in terms of blurry and bokeh effect. And I guess there is uh, quite a good performance in this trio of cameras. Now the selfie is actually uh, embedded in this teardrop uh, notch here. Let's just try to switch to the selfie camera and see what we get in terms of uh, selfie performance. Yeah, sure, my face is getting a bit elongated and, uh, well, you don't get much of anything really. It's not excessively detailed or it's not uh, really aimed towards performance or getting the most out of your pics, but I would say it's plenty enough. Now, what I like about the the camera itself is not the fact that it's performance oriented but rather that, that you can really use uh, the um, um, interface. It's well it's user friendly and uh, I'll get to why that is important in just a bit. Now other 
aspects that would interest me in this phone is the way it moves because on paper it sure has plenty to offer. Usually this bad boy is running on Android 11 upgradable to Android 13. It has 64 gigabytes of memory offering 4 gigs of RAM so it moves pretty decent. You don't really feel any lag. I'm sure if you throw a lot of uh, a lot of uh, apps at it, it will start to struggle and it certainly is not a gamer's choice. So teenagers looking for a phone on a budget, I don't think this is an option. But as on, on itself, as it stands here with basic apps, it's more than acceptable in terms of performance. Build construction is actually excellent. I do like this charcoal gray hue, this uh, shiny finish and really does feel great. It's plastic but not plasticky if that sounds anywhere near logic. I would call it premium uh, flagship from 5 to 10 years ago. Uh, unfortunately it's also a fingerprint magnet so I have <laughs> repeatedly cleaned this device but still I get smudges every time I touch it. Naturally a case would be in order even if you don't want to protect the device itself you don't want it smudgy and messy so I guess it would be the best choice. I would guess and that is actually the case here people of a certain age non-tech non-techy people they're not nerds they don't know really the geeky stuff that goes into an android device I would say this is a great option for them it's easily legible it's at a, a reasonable price it works excellently, it offers a 5000 mAh battery with fast charging I might add, which is a great plus. This thing will go for days if you don't throw too much at it. While well, it's gonna sound biased, again I apologize for that, but this is my own opinion and conclusion on the matter. Uh, if you are a young person looking at a performance oriented budget model this obviously is not the choice. It might look the par and maybe the cameras are the only thing that uh, stands out from this package but really you should not consider this if you're going to be a heavy user, if you're going to install a lot of apps on this phone or if you try to use it every day for TikTok and uh, YouTubing and uh, binge watching or gaming, this will not work. It's just the normal phone for normal usage with the odd social media thrown at it, maybe a photo with the family and stuff like that. So really that's my brief take on the Samsung Galaxy A13. Um, share your thoughts in comments as maybe you, are, uh, you have been using this thing for quite a while now and you can give me more insights. I would like to, uh, I would like to hear them. So as always, thanks for watching and remember, I mostly buy, own and collect useless, obsolete tech stuff. But in this instance, I might just have given you some important, <laughs> relevant, contemporary uh, tech uh, advice. See you in the next one. Bye bye.